Okay. Well, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us uh, for our Wednesday webinar series at Middlebury College. Uh, my name is Sam Prouty. I'm the Director of Admissions here at Middlebury. I've been here about seven years. Um, I'm a proud graduate of a different liberal arts college, and I majored in English there, and then I was an English teacher for a long time before I came and did this work and have a graduate degree from Middlebury's own very special Breadloaf School of English. Um, and I remember when I told my father when I was a teenager that I wanted to major in English, he, he rolled his eyes at me and said, oh my goodness, you're just going to write poetry in our basement for the rest of your life, aren't you? Um, and we, we sometimes, uh, we hear that stereotype. And so we are here to talk about the humanities tonight, spotlight on the humanities. Um, I think it's important that the root word of humanities is human. And when and my work in the admissions office, um, people often ask me questions about Middlebury graduates, you know, where do they get jobs and where do they go to graduate school? And most of those questions um, are about what happens to you immediately when you graduate from Middlebury. And I wish people asked the question a little bit differently. I wish they said, are Middlebury graduates really interesting, cool people when they're 57 years old? Are they well read? Do they know how to process data? Do they know how to question the veracity of what is supposedly the truth that has been put in front of them? Are they engaged in their communities? Do they know something about the world that they live in, potentially beyond the thing that they might do for a living? Um, are they people who are curious for their entire lives to learn more and to constantly process uh, and communicate and constantly grow? Um, I think the litmus test of a great education, and, and hopefully those of you out there, if you end up coming to Middlebury, I want you to call me on your 59th birthday. And I want you to say, Sam, I turned out really interesting and really cool because I study the humanities at Middlebury College and, and thank you. And we'll say, hey, no problem. That's what we're here for. Um, so spotlight on the humanities tonight. You know, I think no matter what you major in, whether it is the humanities themselves, and there are certainly a million things one can do with a humanities education from Middlebury College, um, or whether you just would like to learn more about how the humanities are taught here, even if you don't yet know what you wanna study. That's what we're here to talk about this evening. So thanks again for joining us. A couple of quick notes. Um, if you have questions uh, during our Q&A section, which will happen in about 20 or 25 minutes, um, you can please put them in the Q&A section, but not in the chat. And you should all know that there will be, we have a number of students in the background who will be answering your questions in that Q&A. So if we don't get to all questions live, we do have people answering them uh, in, in the background and apologies in advance if we can't quite get to uh, get to all of them. Okay, I should do uh, what I should be quiet because you're not really here to listen to me. So without any further ado, we're going to hand it over to three professors first, and then three students after that. And so I'm delighted to introduce Marion Wells to you all. Uh, and thanks again. Still muted, Marion. Let me start that again, uh, now that I'm unmuted. Um, welcome to everyone. It's a real pleasure to be speaking to so many people about the humanities. Um, I'm Marion Wells, as Sam said. And since last year, I've been the co-director of the Axon Center for the Humanities. I'm also a professor of the English and American Literatures Department, and I'm affiliated with Comparative Literature and Gender Sexuality and Feminist Studies. And my uh, remit this evening is to talk briefly about humanities most broadly at Middlebury um, to try and give an overview of the sort of big picture of humanities. So I'll, I'll quickly do that. And then I'll also say a few words about the um, English and American Literatures Department. So humanities at Middlebury, I think one of the things that makes Middlebury actually um, genuinely unique, although that word is often overused, I think it's actually true in relation to Middlebury's humanities offerings we have a not just a huge range of departments and programs, 25 uh, departments and programs um, are listed under the humanities umbrella, including languages, English, history, history of art, food studies, and, and so on. Um, but we also have um, a kind of humanities diaspora that would include Breadloaf School of English that Sam was just referring to. Um, we offer a summer master's program uh, at Breadloaf every summer. Um, but Middlebury undergraduates can apply to take courses um, as part of Breadloaf. That School of English is associated with writers' conferences, including a high school uh, writers' conference. 
We also have on campus, we are host to the New England Review, which is a very well regarded literary journal, which showcases innovative original work and actually also provides opportunities for undergraduates um, who are involved in proofreading, organizing readings, um, involved in selection process. Um, and then off campus, we have uh, several humanities abroad programs, um, one at Oxford, the uh, Middlebury CMRS Oxford Humanities program that was has been run by Middlebury since 2014. We also have Middlebury's renowned schools abroad, uh, language schools abroad, um, offering instruction in 10 languages in 16 countries, I believe. Um, and then during the summer, the language summer schools at Middlebury, um, where we teach 12 languages, including most recently Abenaki that was just added last summer. So there's a really broad range of different kinds of humanities um, fields and, and programs offered at Middlebury that will, that will engage you here on campus, but also in these very uh, different uh, elements abroad. Um, I also wanted to say a quick word about, I, I, with my co-director Phoebe Armanios in history, um, we wrote a report um, about humanities and humanities at Middlebury last summer and placing, placing Middlebury humanities in a national perspective. And one of the things I, I want to say is how important humanities training is for uh, employers. If you go to, there are a couple of really important major recent reports that show that um, employers are looking for in particular communication skills, writing skills, presentation skills, um, critical thinking skills, all of which are central to a humanities education at Middlebury. Um, similarly, there was a, a recent report in 2019 that showed that humanities graduates um, under, under 35 do actually very well, even better than their counterparts um, in uh, coming out of other programs in terms of finding employment. So this is one aspect of the hum humanities narrative that I think is important to address. Really quickly, um, I think I also um, um, uh, lined up to say a quick word about my own department, which is the uh, English and American Literatures Department. Um, so a couple of things to emphasize here. We offer both a um, focus on literary history um, and an awareness of the development of the field within a global perspective, including study of race and ethnicity, gender and sexuality and other related fields. We also have a creative writing program housed within ENAM. Um, in some schools, it's a separate program, but for us, it's part of the English department. Um, so if you major in English and American literatures, you can choose to do what we call the literature uh, concentration or a creative writing concentration. Um, and your, your requirements will be a little different depending on which of those you choose. Um, so I don't know how long I've spoken, but I'm, I'm probably out of time, but I'm happy to come back uh, later and answer any questions about any of those things. Thank you. Thank you, I, Professor uh, Wells, and we'll, we'll hand it over to Professor uh, Stefano Mula. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Stefano Mula. I teach in the Italian department, where I'm also the chair, and I'm the director of the linguistics of the comparative literature program, and I'm also affiliated with the linguistics program. I've been at Middlebury for close to 19 years right now, so for a long time, and I've always been in the Italian department. Um, there are <laughs> Sam uh, had an introduction saying some of the stereotypes uh, about majoring in the humanities. One stereotype of, about majoring in a language is that you only learn a language. Actually, that's really not the case. We are part, uh, we teach nine, 10 languages here in Middlebury, depending on, uh, we also teach sign language in uh, J term. So languages certainly is something that we do. Uh, however, we are languages, cultures, and literature departments. We cover many different topics, such as, uh, say, migration or cinema, identity, uh, landscape. We offer a variety of courses in all our departments and programs. One of their strengths is really that uh, our professors are all both scholars and very often also authors, writers, creators. We have small classrooms. Uh, we really take care of uh, students 
who will learn not only the language, but how to communicate in the language. They will learn cultural competency. And most of all, uh, which is a skill that is highly in need these times, they will learn how to understand the text, uh, how to deal with texts that are full of falsehoods. They will be able to navigate, say, in the web or in the political realm. Um, to give you uh, a quick uh, idea of what our students do after graduating in uh, LCL department, such as Italian. Some of my students are now PhD students in Ivy League um, universities. Some of them are international lawyers. Some of them are economists traveling all the world by using the skills in Italian that they learned here. Others are physicists or multimedia storytellers. So we have a strength, we have a connection with our students from the past. Uh, in, in a few days, I have a student uh, who is now working with a posse in New York, coming to talk to my class on Italian identity about uh, black Italians. Um, and so we have a great connection, a great um, network. And uh, I think that our, our strengths are, are really clear from uh, what our students do next. And I'm happy to answer all your questions. Thank you. Um, we'll hand it over to our third professor, uh, Professor Ellery Fouch, round, uh, rhymes with ouch and couch, as I'm told. So a nice, uh, nice poem. See, I, I do write poetry. Nice poem for you to remember, although I didn't write that. Um, a reminder out there that we do have people answering the Q&A even while we're speaking. Uh, so if you do have questions, you don't have to hesitate to, to put them right in the Q&A. We've got people ready to go. Professor Fouch. Great. Thanks, Sam. Um, yes, my name is Ellery Fouch and that AMPST at the bottom uh, refers to the program in American Studies uh, where I teach here at Middlebury. And I've been asked to speak uh, briefly to the place of interdisciplinarity. Um, in the humanities and at Middlebury in particular. Um, and as a representative from an interdisciplinary department, um, American Studies seriously uh, examines the history, literature, and culture broadly writ of the United States um, from magazines, advertisements, and popular music or the role of sports in American culture to kind of the loftiest intellectual traditions and analysis. Um, for me, I earned my PhD in the history of art. And so at Middlebury, I teach classes on the art and material culture of the United States. And I'll say a little more about that. Uh, my primary research project uh, is about 19th century ideas about perfection and its preservation um, from an obsessive butterfly collector. Butterflies, fun fact, are known as the perfect state of the inset because they go through that really visible metamorphosis. Uh, so an obsessive butterfly collector to a late 19th century bodybuilder known as the perfect man. So perfection from butterflies to bodybuilders. <laughs> and that carries over in, my, uh, in the courses I teach um, where we uh, talk about histories of natural history, for example, and students research the um, institutional history and the cultural significance of specimens housed in the biology or geology departments. Um, I teach a class about history of museums and museum controversies, um, which each week brings something new, um, and uh, classes about um, a whole this wide variety of things, a class on American bodies at the moment, um, which in the time of COVID is especially uh, pressing, the vulnerability of our bodies. Um, one thing I love about interdisciplinarity and these kinds of interdisciplinary topics is that it allows us to think expansively, creatively, and critically about issues across spans of time um, and space. So for example, this week in my class on American literature and culture prior to 1830, which is a key course in the American studies major, um, we talked about Paul Revere's engraving of the uh, Boston Massacre, British representations of um, the Boston Tea Party, and representations of and attitudes towards protest then and now. Um, so I think 
Middlebury makes for such a wonderful place to think about these connections but across history and in our own lives and their significance. So thank you. Thank you all. Um, we're going to now turn to three student voices. The best way to get to know any college is to pick the brain of its students. And so here we go. Um, first up, we'll have Hawa Adam. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Hawa Adam. I am a junior this year, I'm a Black Studies major, global health minor. Um, I use she, her, her pronouns. And yeah, today I'm just going to talk a little bit about my major and then a little bit about my extracurriculars and things that I've done on campus. Um, so in terms of my major, I'm a Black Studies major. So a lot of what we focus on is just the study of Black people, um, their history, their culture, sociology, and religion. Something really interesting about my major is that it's fairly new. Um, actually, the first program just got implemented last year, and I was privileged enough to take the first intro course um, that was offered. And so, yeah, a lot of um, the major um, questions that we're trying to answer through these courses, I've gotten an opportunity to do through several different courses. The one that I'm particularly enjoying this semester is um, African cinema. It's a new way, it's a new lens into looking into my major that's not traditionally um, humanities, I guess, I, for, at least for me, because I've taken a lot of writing courses, um, writing intensive courses. So I'm very interested in film and media culture um, as it relates to my major. Um, I guess in terms of extracurriculars that I've done related to my major and otherwise, um, I was the president of Emoja, which is the African organization on campus. So I've had a lot of opportunity to kind of work with um, Black, African, and non-African um, communities on campus to try to bring them together through conversations about the diaspora. Um, I've also um, done J-Term, which is like the winter course that Middlebury does. Um, abroad twice now. So I've gone to Jamaica my freshman year. So I've had an opportunity to kind of learn about the black experience there, as well as I've done um, an internship down like a service internship down in Ghana. So I had an opportunity to also interact with the black community down there. So I've had a lot of array of experiences related to my major. So I'm happy to talk more about that. Thanks so much. Uh, going next to Ben BC. Sorry about that. Uh, hi, I'm Ben. Um, I'm a senior Feb, so that means I'll graduate in February of 2022. Um, I'm a history major. Uh, I did not come into Middlebury thinking I'd be a history major. Uh, Professor Fouch mentioned sort of interdisciplinarity, and I definitely came in with a sort of wide stretch of, of interests. Um, and I think what really caught my attention was a particular class I took sophomore year. Um, which I think is worth pointing out because uh, this was a 400 level seminar. And I think it's one of the sort of hidden gems of especially the humanities departments because they're similar in a lot of them. Uh, these seminars are um, around 16 people or so. They meet once a week for a couple of hours and they let you really dive into a text or an idea and discuss it with your classmates as much or more than you're actually discussing with your professor. And this one I took sophomore year was called Modernity and its Critique. And it was the history of the idea of modernity. Um, and it just opened my eyes to the way that history can be used as sort of a interpretive tool to understand the world and what's going on now and what you know, the world has looked like at different uh, places and points in, in history. Um, so I've been running with that. I still talk with that professor who's now my major advisor on a lot of the same questions. Um, and then I spent all of my junior year at the, the Middlebury Oxford program, um, which was, as you can imagine, one of the best places to study history, you know, you could hope for. Uh, and so I think since freshman year, I've gone on this, this sort of journey from being interested in kind of everything to now being, you know, not only a, a uh, full-blooded humanities, you know, lover, but also realizing that, you know, it's still very interdisciplinary. So I've taken a bunch of languages um, and a bunch of other classes and pulled them all into this sort of historical understanding. Um, and then I guess the only other thing I'd throw in is uh, we also have a lot of, uh, I would say humanities sort of extracurriculars. Um, uh, I like to write, I discovered here that I like to write. Uh, so I've been writing for the, the campus newspaper this year 
I've gotten a group of people that we've kind of started forming our own um, semi-intellectual magazine, but there's also at least one literary magazine, a travel writing magazine. We have a wide range of um, publications that people get involved with, which I think is um, part of that sort of vibrancy of, of having a uh, humanities discussion across campus and across different disciplines. Thanks, Ben. And we'll turn now to our final panelist before we open it up to just full Q&A. So uh, Faiza Shaman, the mic is yours. Hi, everyone. I'm Faiza. I am representing the film department here, but technically I'm a film and psychology double major. Um, I'm the class of 2020.5, which means most of the peers that I call, you know, my closest cohort have actually graduated already. So this is my last semester and I'll be graduating in all of five weeks. So um, this is, I, I mean, I feel like I've had a long time here and, and a great time here. Um, so when I first decided to be a film major, I always knew um, coming into Middlebury and psychology was sort of what came later. But for film, I was concerned between picking um, a larger state school that would be vocational or a more industrial program than something that's small liberal arts and may not be as specified. And I was very happy once I came at Preview Days and I spoke to several professors who have now become so many of my favorite people and mentors during my time here. And they have a lot of opportunities to really design the major in the way that you see is best fit for you. So we have the theory track and we have the production track. Um, my favorite course during my time here has actually been screenwriting too. It challenged me the most in that course. It's an upper level screenwriting course. You write a feature length film and you rewrite it and then you finish it and you have essentially this giant manuscript that you can then enter into you know, screenwriting competitions, et cetera, and try and get funded to, to make a project. Um, and then in terms of some of my extracurriculars that I've done here, I would say I'm very lucky. I have really milked Middlebury in many ways. So I work for the film department. Um, I actually also work for the 3D animation studio on campus. Um, I've done internships in LA and internships in remote production companies for Mindset TV in Af like across the continent of Africa. Um, I've worked on professor films with local actors and directors and had a lot of really fun projects during my time here. Um, but yeah, my, my heart is out with all of you because I'm in the grad school circuit right now. So I was literally attending one of these conferences and eager to ask questions. So I think we should transition right into that. Well, thank you all. As we transition um, into the Q&A section here, I'm, I'm talking and sharing my screen at the same time, which is hard for me to do. But um, I'd like to put everybody's names and contact information up on the screen so that folks out there can see it, um, can see this information. I just wanna say as one of the admissions people who helped admit the three of you, I am so convinced that you are all going to be very interesting 59 year olds. And I'm really excited about it. And you know, you're passing, you're passing my litmus test in a big way. Um, so thank you again, all of us, all of you for joining us. Um, I will